us with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hot Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, Oh, Silver! of the governor's mansion in Texas. The governor was admitting a tall man through a French door. You're right on time, sir. It was good of you to admit you at this hour. I decided to see you after studying the documents. Please sit down. Thank you. You saw the signal light at least in the window? Yes, sir. The documents and affidavits seem to prove conclusively that the Indian trouble of a year ago was not the fault of those men from San Antonio. That Indian cause was brought about by a crafty schemer who hoped to seize the property of the Texans after they'd been jailed for violating the Indian Peace Pact. Yes. I heard the deathbed confession of that schemer. It casts a new light on the entire affair. I am deeply indebted to the man, the man called the Lone Ranger, for sending me the evidence. And I might add that it was his intercession with these means after the violation of that pact that presented a very serious uprising. The law has been looking for those Texans for a long time. I understand they left the country, went to Mexico. Yes, they did. This letter from the Lone Ranger expresses a hope that I will see fit to grant pardons to those men so they will return to San Antonio. Yes. The message said you would come here tonight for my answer. You were sent by the room here. You received something with that letter by way of identification. I did. It was a silver bullet. Like uh, this one? Well, yes. I thought I might be seen by some members of your staff or family who would be curious about a masked man. Then... You are the moon ranger. Your Excellency, I may or may not be wearing a disguise. Please don't try to find us. Teachers, as well as the nation, is deeply indebted to you for all you have done. If there's any doubt, it's the one that is owed by this date to the men who had to flee from their homes in San Antonio. I shall pardon those men on the strength of this evidence, which is I have checked. But who knows where they are? They're on the Jacob Ranch. Jacob. I've heard of him. He was a renegade from the state. Yes. 
He went to Mexico and secured a lot of land in an old castle. In some ways, he has won high favor with the Mexican authorities. He said to be very wealthy. His places are owned by a high fence and patrolled by guards. Inside that fence, men and women work as slaves. That's where the men and their families from San Antonio have gone. But they would have been safe from arrest anywhere in Mexico. Why in the world did they become slaves on the jet and the ranch? That's a mystery I'd like to solve. Many people have become slaves on the Jaco Ranch, and none have ever left. It will be difficult to get to them and more difficult to get them out of there. But if they can be offered a chance to return to their homes as free people, I... In the name of mercy, go then. Go and tell them Texas wants them, that Texas needs them. And take to them their partner. Jaco isn't paying you to sit in the sunshine, but I can't see the twin of This whip is good medicine. Oh, well, the coolest of men supervised the work on Jaco's ranch. Two women and children were forced to toil long hours for a meager living. The hopelessness of their position had broken the spirit of the strongest men. Now, let there be a lesson to you. Yes, Jimmy. Throw the wall on him. Tell me, get back to work. Mr. Jacob wants to see you right away. All right, Joe. Where is he? He's in the tower. Just go right out. A winding stairway led to the tall room in the old castle that Nico had made his home. I'm right in, boy. I'm waiting for you. Hey, Mr. Jacob. This is quite a room you got up here. This is the first time I've seen it. I had to know a man quite well before I let him into this room. I've been observing you since you came to work for me. Yeah? I've watched you handle a whip and drive the others at their work. I've investigated your crooked background of mistakes. But you're utterly bad. Uh, now, Mr. Jacob, that's just the kind of man I need. Oh. I'm going to give you a job that'll make you rich. What about Peterson and Martin and all the others from Texas? They're dodging the law, but I don't see them getting rich. Well, they're not really bad. When I dropped a hint about my business, they were unwilling to cooperate. So I've kept them suppressed. But, uh, what about me? Here's a package of money. There must be thousands here. It's counterfeit. You, you mean to say these bills are counterfeit? Beyond that door is a printing press together with ink and other essentials. Well, that's your game. You're making counterfeit money. The United States currency is easily spent here in Mexico. $10,000 in that package. Take a trip. Spend freely and convert that into genuine money. When you return, I shall expect $5,000 in silver or gold. What you don't spend, you may keep. Hey. <laughs> If you're all right, Mr. Jacob. I am, as long as I'm not cross. I... What's the matter? You see something out the window? Two horsemen have just ridden up. I wonder how they got past the guard. I don't know. They stopped one of the shacks. Who is there? There's Marty's shack. There's a bell. It's time for the men to quit work in the field. Come with me, but... We'll see who's calling on Matt Martin and why. The Lee Ranger and the Coppo had used desperate measures to get onto the Jaco Ranch. They had ridden boldly up to the gate and knocked down and tied the guard. Those oh, oh, men were alert for trouble as they dismounted in one of the rooms. Bell must have been the signal to stop work. People are leaving the field. Ah. Old men and women come this way. They see if they know anything about the people from Texas. Oh, that's Matt Martin and his wife. Remember them? Yeah, but they're young. Mm. They look plenty old now. I can't believe people could change so many years. Matt! Matt Martin! Uh, hello. I, uh, 
You better go away. But don't you remember me? We met in San Antonio. You want to know why I wore a mask. I, I gave you a silver bullet. Don't stay here. Mary, you remember me. You made coffee for Tata and me. Uh, I know who you are, but go away. We're not allowed to talk to strangers. Mr. Jacob. I have brought you good news. Jacob is no longer running your life. You're free. No, we, we can't leave. We tried it once in the judge court. We'll be ripped for talking to you. Please go away. We don't want to be lashed like... Like Peterson Martin. Well, look here, Martin. See what I have. This is a pardon signed by the governor of Texas. He sent me to bring you back. You and all the men who came here with you. No, it's too late. It's too late. What? Well, look. Jacob's got the law with him. He'd have a stop. Won't you please go away before we're seen talking to you? Why is Jacob so determined to keep you here as workers in his field? Why is he treating you like this? Please. Mary, they won't go till we can. And I'll tell you why we can't get away. You, you've got to go before you're caught. I, I don't know how you got in past the guard, but I pray you'll get out. You see, Jacob makes counterfeit money. He gives sanctuary to fugitives from justice and mistake. Gets them to pass the money for him. He wanted you to do that? Oh, yeah. He thought we were real crooks when he made the proposition. We, it is all the men from San Antonio and I, we turned him down. So he ordered his men to work in the field. Now look at it. We've had the heart and spirit beat out of him. He sees to it that none of us have strength enough to, to make trouble for him. But the law. Jacob is rich and powerful. He's bigger than any law around here. Why did you come here in the first place? <laughs> we were told that Jacob would give us jobs. Yes. Yes, they are true. Yeah. It's Jacob and Phil. Oh, I see you. Who's with him? That's Butch Larkin. The toughest of his overseers. And he's got a book with him. Oh, why did you come here? Oh, 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 an Indian and a masked man. Oh, Mr. Jacob. You didn't invite us here, Jacob. We'll keep your hands where they are and I won't have to shoot. Take his gun, Butch. And the mask. Don't try it, Butch. No? No. The guys at the gate had the same idea. You'll find them wrapped in rope. Smart, huh? Well, there are ways to cure that. For example, this... <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Hey, Mr. Jacob. Let's go. 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 let us go as for you, Butch, on your feet. I'll kill you for this. And you, Martin, you just wait. I have something to say to you. Jacob is going with us. Whatever you do to Martin or anyone else around here will be passed on tenfold to Jacob. You'd better see that Martin is not punished in any way because Jacob won't like it. Uh, remember that when you wake up. When I wake up? Yes. Oh, hey. Lifted him clear off his feet with that blow. You handle Jacob Connor. All right. We got him on horse, ready to go. You think you can get away with it? You're going to try. You just send him to On your way, Connor. I'll fall behind you. Get him up. Come on. Get him there. That's the kind of fighting men you used to be. The curtain falls on the first act of our new ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. After capturing Jaco, the Lone Ranger and Toto went to a well-concealed camp where they waited until the following morning. Soon after sunrise, the Lone Ranger left Toto to guard the captive while he rode to the nearby town. In that town, the chief official was a sincere, hard-working man named Don Jose Amando. Don Jose was in a gay mood and was quite unprepared for the surprise that awaited him when he unlocked his office door. Hey, uh, please close the door. Uh, Matt, what, what does this mean? Please sit down at your desk. How did you get through the locked door? The lock on your door is superior to the lock on your window. But, senor... Have you heard of Don Carlos? Don Carlos? See, si. si, he is an important man. He'll be very pleased to know that you're willing to help me and help Mexico at the same time. To help you? Indeed, senor, you enter my office. Please listen to me, Don Jose. I must ask another question. You know Senor Jekyll? Oh, yes. He is a great man. Very wealthy. He's a crook. And he's my prisoner. No. No, that must not be. He must be released at once. Don Jose, have you heard that counterfeit money is being circulated in Mexico? Yes. Jekyll is the one who makes it in his castle. Oh, I cannot believe this. You will take your men and go with authority to search the castle. You will find proof. I am sure of it. Mm. But if I go and find no proof... I would be the real man. No, I, I cannot risk the anger of Senor Jacob. Uh, I have afraid of that. Don Jose, to capture the counterfeiters would make you a great man. You would be promoted. You would be honest. But I know only what you say. I have no proof of anything. If, uh, if I could bring you proof that Jacob is a crook, a counterfeiter, and the leader of the gang, what then? Oh, senor. Then you would see Don Jose Amano act with the rurales. I'll see what I can do. If I get proof, I'll send you word. And so you know the message comes from me, I'll send you a bullet like this. A bullet, senor? Yes, it's made of silver. If you show it to Don Carlos, he'll tell you that I'm on the side of the law. After leaving Don Jose contemplating the silver bullet, the men went jumping to the camp where Pablo stood guard over the gate. Oh, 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 How's the prison, Andy, fellow? Uh, I'm pretty quiet. Yes, I've been quiet. But I have something to say to you, mister. You can't get away with this. You'll be killed for capturing me. I knew that was a risk before I came to Mexico. Cut these ropes. Let me go and I'll overlook what you've done. Move the horse, Otto. I'll get some clothing from the saddlebag. Uh, you'll never get away with it. I have some influential friends in Mexico. You'll find that out. Saddlebag. Hang on three. Here, horse. In town, I call in the head of the police. He'll come to the Jaco Ranch if I can get proof that Jaco is a counterfeiter. Uh, can trust you. He will. Have you talked to Don Carlos? And what to do now? I've got to get back to Jekyll Ranch. Well, what about guards at gate? Him watch for you. I, I know the peon's grown out understood. I'll disguise myself as a peon. Take a bundle of my own clothes. I'll take them with me. Then I want you to do this. Traveling on foot, disguised as a peon with a bundle on his back, a little ranger had no difficulty getting through the gate in the high fence that surrounded Jekyll's ranch. Later that morning, Matt Martin was working with a hole breaking hard ground. He paid no attention to the man who worked at his side until he heard a low voice. It was not the voice of a peon. Martin, then you have sign that you know. Hey, but you ready? Don't look up. Keep your eyes down. Keep away. I you turn up a hornet's nest in this place when you can't see Jacob. We have nerve to come back. How did you get in? No one paid no attention to a poor peon. I brought my other clothing with me. In that shed near your house. Yeah, but, but why? That I've got to get proof that Jake was a counterfeiter. Tangible proof. I don't know any more than I told you yesterday. Where are you? Yeah. You're over here. Now you're in court. He's coming this way. You am I talking to? What are you doing here? Uh, I'm breaking the girl, senor. You pay arms to stay to stay in your own section. My memory is so poor I forget. Again, huh? Oh. Maybe that'll help you remember. Now get where you belong, or I'll leave this whip across your back. See, 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 you go at once. Well, what are you looking at? Oh, I... Uh, nothing. You keep her working, or I'll forget Bush's orders and brush you with a whip. In his disguise, the low ranger shuffled away from Matt Martin. And when the overseer wasn't looking, approached another of the fugitives from San Antonio. I must be in Peterson. You are not a pay on? No, I'm here to help you. I want proof of Jacob the counterfeiter. Where can I get it? I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything. No one can help me. Go away. 
Time after time, the lone ranger approached one of the men from Texas. One of you must know something that will help me. On several occasions, he was caught by the overseer. Get over where you belong. Oh. He was slapped and lashed by cruel whips. Let this be a little mess, but yet... Oh, 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 oh. But this was nothing compared to the mental torture. There were times when he trembled from the suppressed urge to abandon his role as a humble peon and strike back at the bullying overseer. This is twice I warned you. This time I'll make sure you don't forget. Oh. It was nearly dark when the bell rang. Men and women put away their tools and moved toward their homes with dragging, weary footsteps. Pavel heard the bell, and acting on the Lone Ranger's orders, he waited half an hour, then made sure Jacob was securely tied, and leaped to the saddle to ride to Jose Armando. <laughs> Later that night, the men from Texas crowded into Martin's small cabin. The Lone Ranger had requested Matt to call them together. He'll be here in a minute, boys. I think uh, I hear someone outside. Yeah. Hey, buddy, he's mad. Who's that? Uh, boys, that's the man you talked to. I got rid of the pair on the clothing. Now listen to me, men. I spoke to each one of you. You know that I was trying to learn something about Jacob. Yeah. Uh, it was afternoon when I thought I was going to fail. I heard one of the overseers talking. I learned that Jacob makes his counterfeit money in the room in the tower. Why don't you tell the law that? By this time, men are on their way. And they're carrying on two when they arrive. But they're not into that house to get it. Tell them what you've learned. They're not just defending a man of Jacob's power and wealth by entering that house. Unless they know, they'll see proof when they get there. Proof that Jacob's a counterfeiter. We've got to get that proof. Well, it can't be done. There's no use talking to us. Can't you see what it means to you? Well, I can't help. Move your off Jacob's grip. You'll be free to go home to Texas. To start living again, we've got to attack and fight our way to the tower to get evidence against Jacob. We can't fight, mister. We've got no weapon. Uh, yeah. No five left in it. I remember a day in Dallas Basin. You men were up against big odds. You ran out of ammunition, but you didn't quit. You fought with sticks and stones and bare fists. We showed a pack of crooks what Texas men were like when they got fighting mad. Yeah, yeah. This is your one chance for freedom, your last chance. Another year like the last one will find most of you dead. The governor of Texas has given all of you a pardon. Your homes are waiting back in San Antonio. Must I go back and tell the governor, tell your friends, that Texas men were afraid of Jacob's crooks? But we've got no weapon. That's a poor excuse. The men in the Alamo complain about the odds. What do you think descendants of those men would say if they were here? The Alamo, why not Jacob's men have weapons. Let's use those. Let's take their whips and guns away from them. I, for one, would like to show a couple of those crooks what it feels like to be whipped. How about it, Matt? Well, I... You, Peterson, I'd show like a chance at Butch. Every one of you has a lot to repay. Boy, I'm going with him. I'd rather die fighting than be worse and beat to death. That's the talk, Matt. What about the rest of you? I'll see him. Me too. How about you others? Remember the Alamo, boy. You fellas remember Brian's station, don't you? Remember that rebel yell we used? I remember it. And here she goes. Oh, yeah! Your holes and spades are outside. They'll do until you take some weapons from the others. I have two guns to lead the way. Come on, open the door, boys. Let's get going. Follow me. It seemed that superhuman strength inspired the men from San Antonio. They remembered Brian Station. They remembered the rebel yell. And they remembered the Alamo. The heritage of fighting men had not been entirely beaten down. They stormed the castle. The Lone Ranger was at the door. Two shots broke the lock. The door slammed open, and the masked man leaped into a great hall, where Butch and several of the others had gathered. Bring the gun out, boys! Got that gun! Take away the gun! Show them that we're men from Texas! Show them that we're not legit! It was a furious battle in the hall. Bulls and whips and clubs were swung with frenzy power. And from time to time, the last man was going to to keep one of the outlaws from bringing his own gun into play. Take your way to the car! The outlaws had never seen such fury and determination. They fell back, retreating toward the stairs, but the tech crew kept advancing. Come on, turn the stairs, boys! We gotta get to the car! The car can't go with the through it all, the masked man watched for guns. As fast as one of Jacob's men produced a firearm, the Lone Ranger snapped a shot. Oh, no, he's there. Keep going. Step by step, those men advanced. Then the way ahead was clear. They stormed into the power room, tore open boxes and cases. The Lord's waiting down below. Get everything out the window. That's the machine. Here's the lot of money. Go down the When Jose saw the evidence, he and his men lost no time. 
They rushed into the castle and captured the members of the outlaw band, most of whom were badly beaten and unconscious. To you, Senor Jose Mas, we are deeply indebted. If these men from Texas who made the night's work possible, we have them all, including the guards from the gate. All but the leader, Senor Jake Hill himself. Jacob will be brought here and so will my horse when we bring the bell. When Toto heard the big bell sound in the night, he built camp and brought Jekyll and Silver to the castle. Jekyll's men had all recovered consciousness. They were a sorry outfit as they stood in the moonlight with their hands and feet bound. The Lone Ranger stood beside his great horse, Silver. He was preparing to mount when Jose Amando spoke. I told your friends, senor, the men from Texas, to wrap themselves to horses. I know you did, Jose. They told me. Also, I wish to say, senor, I spoke to Don Carlos about you. I showed him the bullet of silver, and he told me... Look, look, Jose. The people over the shack, they're ready to leave. They're not even going to wait till morning. Oh, senor, they owe much to you. The government of Mexico owes much to you. And I... Well, I too shall be promoted. And I owe that to you. Adios, Jose. Easy, steady, big fella. We meet again. Let's go, fellow. I owe that masked man something, too. I owe him plenty. Oh, yes. Yes, Senor J. Hill. <laughs> you can think of that debt while you are in jail. Who is he? He, Senor. He is the Lone Ranger. I'll see Campbell Enterprises and directed by Charles D. Levinson. Tonight's drama was written by...